Okay, my brothers and sisters, in King Yeshua HaMashiach, I greet you. I do pray that everyone's had a great day in our mighty Jehovah God Almighty. It is about 10 o'clock p.m. here in North Carolina, and I will have a vision to give you as well as Father Yahweh's words, and I will be reading Revelation 19, which is a great chapter because it tells you about King Yeshua coming back with his saints. Amen. And this vision, um, it has symbolism in it, and you'll see what King Yeshua said at the after the vision. So I wanted to I wanted to say a little bit about walking with our precious Savior. There is nothing like it in this world. When you accept King Yeshua into your heart, He begins working with you. He begins, oh, I don't know, I guess, redirecting your life to conform to how He wants you to be. And it's not an easy redirecting, but it, he changes your life for the complete better. And there's there's nothing like him. There's nothing like having him dwelling within you. There's nothing like having God dwelling within you. And you cannot have God dwelling within you if you do not accept King Yeshua into your very heart to the very core of your being. You cannot have God residing with you if you do not accept Him. The Father will not accept you if you do not accept His glorious Son. It says it several times in His Word. If you do not acknowledge the Son, the Father does not acknowledge you. And um, you do not want to go to everlasting hell. You do not want to be on fire for all eternity, which is what happens when you go to hell. Eternal fire, where the worm dieth not, weeping and gnashing of teeth. Awful, awful, awful sounding place awful. You do not want to go there. Please, if you feel that tugging at your heart, if you feel like you can't go on, if you feel like you're at the end of your rope, if you, if you feel like you want to know God, please accept Him into your heart. And Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 helps you Invite King Yeshua into your heart. It tells you what you must do in order to be saved. And being saved is when King Yeshua comes into your heart and when he starts redirecting you. Starts holding your hand and walking with you. And showing you his ways, not the world's ways. So verse 9 says, And you must come to him with a complete, repentant, and broken heart. God works with broken hearts and contriteness and humbleness. He resists the proud. And he knows when you come to him what your heart is saying. God knows the hearts. He knows your every thought. He knows your every move. And even if you're even if if his other children that don't walk with him, he knows them. 
he um, knows their every move. He is God. He knows everything. You cannot hide from him. You cannot do anything that you think is in the dark that he doesn't know about because he knows about everything. And when you have God dwelling within you, you have the light of the world dwelling within you. King Yeshua is the light. Father Yahweh is the Father of lights. And the beautiful Holy Spirit is a light unto your path that King Yeshua takes you down. So verse 9 says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The Father raised King Yeshua after he died, three days later, from the dead by his Spirit, by his power. And King Yeshua is alive forevermore, making intercession for us. He is a mediator between God's wrath and us. For if we do not have King Yeshua in our heart, we don't have his blood covering, which he shed upon Calvary, which he shed upon that horrible cross that he willingly put himself on. If you do not have King Yeshua's blood covering you, which cleanses you, and his word says he is faithful and true to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, his blood cleanses us, purifies us, If you do not have his blood covering, then you have the wrath of the Father against you. And let me tell you, my friend, you do not want the wrath of the Father. He gave me a dream. And in the dream, a non-believer was in, about to feel, about to be destroyed by the Father. And I felt probably just a tiny, minute feeling of his wrath. And you do not want <clears throat> to be, you do not want to be the object of his wrath. You do not. It truly frightened me. Very much so. It is a, the fear of God that was truly frightening and because I'm a believer because I have King Yeshua in my heart because I have his blood covering I wrap myself around that person to help save him from God's wrath and I don't know what happened because then God let me wake up and uh I don't know if I wanted to know what happened, but I did feel just a tiny minute, I'd probably say not even a milliliter, whatever that means, I think it's small, of his wrath. You do not want to be the object of God's wrath. You do not. You do not. It is truly the most powerful thing you have ever experienced and it's not a good power to experience but that is what our Savior our King our mighty Redeemer did for us he willingly suffered the most horrible death one can ever imagine willingly let the Roman soldiers beat him, torture him, humiliate him. He did that for us. 
and there is no amount of thank yous into all eternity that we could ever tell him thank you for what he did for what he did for the world and when he was walking here on earth he was obedient to his father for his father was with him the spirit the holy spirit was with him and he spoke what the father told him and he suffered he stepped down from his what do you call it glory paradise He's God. He stepped down and made himself a little lower than the angels. How loving is that? You can't describe it. You can't measure God's love. You just can't. In his word it says there are very few that would put their lives down for a righteous person. But King Yeshua put his life down for every one of his creation. He forgave the Roman soldiers that beat him. He forgave everybody that turned him in. And um, he is faithful and just to forgive. When you come to him in confession of your faults, your sins, sincerely and with a broken heart he will come into your heart and then you you remain in a repentant state you remain wanting to please him for when he comes into your heart you have God dwelling within you and you want to please God you want to do whatever you can for him. You can't do anything for God. He has everything he ever needed. But he does want you to do certain things. He does expect things of you. He expects us to tell about him. To tell about his great love. Somewhere in his word it says to occupy. Will he find any faithful when he comes back? So you want to please God whenever he dwells within you. Whenever he's with you. You just want to please him. You want to live for him. You want to deny your flesh by the Holy Spirit. He helps you crucify your flesh and deny the lust of the world. Deny your flesh and live for God. So if you have any questions, as I had mentioned, it's on the screen in front of you, but um, it's WND Gross 31260 at yahoo.com if you have any questions I will be happy to pray about them and get back with you when you email me it takes a while for me to get back with you because I pray about each email each message and that does take a while and um, so I will begin to read Revelation 19 which is so exciting. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power and to the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, 
Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive, into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth. And all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Let us praise our wonderful and mighty God. Our mighty God, Jehovah Elohim eternal grace, eternal glory, eternal righteousness. You are from everlasting to everlasting. You are glory to glory. You are the great I am. You are omnipotent, omniscient, and you are omnipresent. You are all-knowing and all-powerful. And I praise your holy and mighty name. You are the triune God. You are the mighty Father God. God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. And I praise you and I worship you. I fall down upon my knees in complete subjection, submission unto my God. May your perfect will be done in my life, Father. May I follow your every word. I know I will stumble and I'll fall, but that's when your precious Son comes and picks me up and puts me back on the glorious path, the narrow path. 
the narrow path that leads to you, Father. How glorious and how wonderful our God is. And I thank you for being my God. I thank you for holding me in your hands. I know your word says that we are precious in your sight. Thank you so much. I love your commandments. I love your laws. I love your statutes. I love everything about you, my precious God. I worship you and I adore you and I will sing your praises and I will glorify your name Alleluia to your holy name and King Yeshua's precious and holy name Amen and Amen Alright this vision I received 7 December, the night of 7 December, and it says, I see something like a surfer going right in front of me in the vision. So I'm looking, I'm seeing this vision, and I call it my video screen because that's, this is what it looks like sometimes. And it, it goes right in front of me in the vision very fast and I see the waves of the of the ocean I then see that it has turned into an ice skating rink I see many people skating around the skating rink and all of a sudden this one person stops directly in front of me in the vision in front of my video screen the person looked like a mime and had the type of clothing and the face had the clownish makeup on it. You know, the white face with the, I guess, the, the markings around the eyes and the, the mouth. He points a gun straight at me and fires it and leaves. I then hear, it was Obama that was just shot. It will be at an event, not necessarily these two that you just saw. God uses symbolism. Pray about this vision. That's from Mighty Jehovah God. Pray about this vision. And it does not mean that the event's going to be at an ice skating rink or a surfing event. That's some kind of symbolism that God wants you to pray about. And the scripture that goes along with this is Revelation 13, 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Okay, and now here's Father Yahweh's word to me and to his children. Please take this word in the prayer. Psalm 16, 8. I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. I received this word from Father God Yahweh at 8.23 p.m. on 8 December 2015. Daughter of Zion, write my words for all of my children to hear and to experience. This is Jehovah God Almighty. I am the power. I will bring everyone to their knees to my son. My daughter tells you about my word, for she is grounded in it. She is not perfect at it, but she knows it. This is an example for you. Read my word. Know what I am telling you in it. Use my sword, powerful and true, against the enemy. It is a double-edged sword. My son Yeshua, when he returns with his saints, will use the sword of God to destroy the enemy. Read about the plague that he smites them with. My faithful and true children, you must stay close to my son in the times coming. You must make him your every thought, for he is right there for you. 
you feel his delightful presence upon you. It is very important that you take heed to what I am telling you, my blessed children. You need to stay on your knees much more than you already are. Sing and worship me, your mighty God, Jehovah, for I open my ears up to my children who praise me. Praising your God also helps get rid of the enemy. My faithful children, I will gird you up with strength for the battle. Allow me to be with you and protect you. I am your all in all. Father Yahweh Elohim Eternal has spoken. And I will leave you with number 6, verses 23 to 27. God's blessing to his children. Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. In the mighty name of King Yeshua HaMashiach, Baruch Hashem Adonai, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen.